Thank you very much, Nils. And it will be difficult to follow such a wonderful comments and, and contributions as President Giscard d'Estaing, President Buzek, and Vice President Kreuz. But I'd like to pick up on a couple of key points because the, the topic of tonight, which is science, media, and democracy, this theme has always been central to the work of Atomium Culture that works to bring together leading European research universities, media, industry, and policymakers to talk about issues that concern all of us and that where we need to work together. And I think this past year has underlined the difficulty that democracy in Europe is facing today and has made us question the changing role of science, media, and democracy. As also Commissioner Croy said, the Internet has been the single most significant contribution in knowledge in the past 600 years. The impact that this tool will have on knowledge sharing is enormous, and we have only started to look at this trajectory. We can see that if you look at recent statistics published by the European Commission, the number of people in an average scientific network in Europe is still around 100. So we're talking about still small networks that scientists are still working in terms of groups and affiliations. If we look at also our CTO did a little study on the efficiency of the research system within our universities, where 100% efficiency was if everyone knew everything that everyone else was doing. This is, of course, a utopian idea. But he came to the number 8.7%. This is not a particularly good number if we're looking about competitiveness. And this is, of course, not due to the fact that people are sitting having coffee all day. It's because there's so much knowledge out there. There's so much information, and we're not sharing in an intersectoral and interdisciplinary way, and that is really the, the challenge for uh, tomorrow. Uh, Professor Philip Sharp, president of the AAAS, he mentioned that this is the biggest potential that science has for the future, is intersectoral and interdisciplinary collaboration. The potential that we have is, is, is huge. So that is my first point, and I say, how can, we meet, how can we work with the media and these new tools, and bringing up to some of the points of, of Commissioner Croix. The second challenge posed by this summit is how to bridge the gap with citizens. Carl Sagan famously said that we live in a society that is exquisitely dependent on science and technology, in which hardly anyone knows anything about science and technology. And I think this really brings um, a lot of... of uh, the, this sentence says a lot about the sentiment of a lot of people um, today when it comes to science and innovation. So last year, Termium Culture launched a project with five um, uh, newspapers in five countries. We did it in Austria with the Standard, in Spain with El País, Germany, Frankfurt, der Allgemeine Zeitung, Ireland, Irish Times, and Italy with El Sole 24 Ore. To look with the public, working with the media, are they interested? Do they want to be? Are we actually talking or are we just imagining that they want to be interested? Is this all in our, in our minds? And we came out with some really interesting results. The first one was, of course, that yes, they were interested in science and innovation, that if you brought it to them in the right package, they were very interested. They did think that science and um, research in general brought new concepts and new ideas to the debates. And this is particularly um, interesting when, when we asked also, for instance, do you think that the public should be engaged in where we're running on, on, on certain scientific issues? And they did want to be engaged. We're talking about now in the European Commission, we have changed the research agenda around societal challenges. The basic concept is that science relates to societal issues and that science should be guided by the needs of society. So when looking actually on the more negative sides of what citizens felt, if they felt that policymakers actually were listening to the opinions and concerns of society. There we had a very, I would say, about 80% felt that policymakers were not listening enough. So we hoped for a more positive approach when we said, well, scientists are listening. Scientists must be listening. And to the, the, what is the opinion of, the, of, of uh, readerships there? And there we also got over 50% of the participants to the survey didn't feel that science, scientists were guided by the needs and concerns of society. So we're not talking about leading or about defining, but we're talking about listening and engaging. And that's, I think, what Nelly Croix put, and a very important point. It's not about 
uh, you know, creating a cacophony of information and just everything, but it's about opening up, joining, sharing, sharing ideas. And I think this is a, it has an, an instrumental way of working when it comes to science-based policymaking, because today we are moving towards a more deliberative democracy. We are moving towards um, a system in which public wants to be engaged about the facts. They want to know the facts. When you looked at, for instance, the Scottish referendum, uh, there were a lot of facts that came out, but one of the things, as many people said, is we wanted more facts. We wanted more information that we could actually hold on. So people, when it comes to concerns about uh, society, people realize the importance of the facts and the science. So what we in Atomium Culture have been doing and what President Giscard d'Estaing alluded to before is we will be... Um, launching next year a big project that does precisely that. It does what Atomium Culture is doing now on, a, on, a, on an individual level, but on a much higher level. We want to bring together the scientists, the, the policy makers, industry and media and work through this to get citizens involved and to actually create a different way in which all these different sectors and all these different disciplines um, can work to be better together for a stronger future. Now, in these two days, we've brought together here in Brussels leading representatives from university and academia, from media and the publishing industry, from um, policymakers, both European and national, and industry, both business and industry organizations. So we really want to see how can we think about this in a different way? How can we push the border? How can we really um, challenge how we work now. We've just, we're in the beginning of the, let's put it, knowledge revolution that the internet brought out, and we have huge opportunities there. And we want to see what do we need to do now to be ready in 10, 20 years' time where we want to be with a society of the future, a more participatory, a more engaged, and a more deliberative democracy. So whilst you go for the coffee, I want to think about a bit about this. This will be obviously a central debate afterwards for the expert panel discussion as well. So I look forward very much to hearing what comes out of that conversation. Thank you very much and thank you for...